So we've mentioned that benzene is by far the most common aromatic compound, uh, but it is my, by no means the only aromatic compound. And you've definitely, one of the big focus of this chapter is you gotta be able to identify compounds that are aromatic. So and once we figure out how to identify those compounds that are aromatic, then we can talk about the ones that aren't, because the compounds that aren't aromatic will either fall into one of two categories. They'll either be anti-aromatic or they'll end up being non-aromatic. So any compound I show you, you should be able to put it in one of those three categories, either aromatic, Any compound I show you, you should be able to put it in one of those three categories, either aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. So let's first talk about aromatic compounds, and we'll just kind of keep an idea uh, of what benzene looks like here to keep this here. So if you notice benzene here, it's a six-membered ring. It looks like it's got alternating single and double bonds, but if you notice the two resonance structures, there are no double bonds in benzene. Kind of they're like the equivalent of like one and a half bonds, but you've got delocalization all the way around the ring here. So it's not like you have three short bonds and three long bonds, three double bonds and three single bonds. You've got delocalization all the way around. And so some people, instead of drawing either one of these resonant structures, we sometimes call them KKLA structures. So they will just simply draw, so looking like cyclohexane with a circle in it. Um, but that's supposed to represent benzene as well. Take your pick. Um, so benzene is going to be our classic example here. And benzene, first and foremost, is cyclic and it is conjugated system. That's easy to see. Um, and the idea of being a completely conjugated system is that every atom in the ring has to have an unhybridized p orbital. So if we look at kind of benzene here, every carbon in benzene is sp2 hybridized. Being sp2 hybridized, that third p orbital is not hybridized at all. And so every carbon in benzene's got a p orbital. They're all parallel to each other, it turns out, and their sideways overlap all the way around the ring. So there's delocalization all the way around the ring. And that's the requirement for... Uh, for being aromatic here. So one of the keys here is that there are no sp3 hybridized atoms allowed in the ring. Uh, if they're sp3 hybridized, that means they don't have one of these unhybridized p orbitals. They've used all their p's in the hybrid. So uh, another way to look at rule number two is instead of saying each atom in the ring has to have an unhybridized p orbital, you might just say there's no sp3 hybridized atoms allowed in the ring. If you find a ring that has an sp3 hybridized atom, that is definitely not aromatic. Uh, next rule, for there to be delocalization all the way around and, and sideways overlap of all these p orbitals, it's got to be able to adopt a planar structure. If it's not planar, you don't get that sideways overlap, you don't get that delocalization. So it's also got to be able to have a planar structure. And this one's a little bit trickier. So it turns out if you're a, a ring that is seven atoms or smaller, you can definitely be planar. But the opposite's not necessarily true. If you're a ring with more than seven atoms, eight or more, some are planar, some aren't. And we'll give you a couple concrete examples, but outside of that, it's a little bit tricky, and uh, usually we try to avoid asking you too many questions in that regard as a result. But seven atoms or less, you can definitely have a planar conformation, but eight atoms or more, maybe, maybe not. Uh, finally, we're going to count the number of pi electrons in there, and we use this term 4n plus 2, and we saw this once before, but we're going to count the number of pi electrons specifically, and if you have a 4n plus 2 number, and that's a way of defining an infinite set of numbers here, where n can be any integer. So I get a lot of students ask me, well, Chad, what, how do I tell from a structure what value of n we have? You don't. So n is any value, any time. So when we start with 0, so if n equals 0, 4 times 0 is 0 plus 2, that is 2. If n is 1, 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6 then 10, then 14, then 18, and so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity. If the number of pi electrons matches any one of these numbers in this infinite set, so that is also a requirement needed to be aromatic. So you've got to meet all of these requirements. Uh, one of the big mistakes students make is they'll start counting electrons from the get-go, but the first thing you should do is just make sure and verify all three of these first rules. Cyclic and conjugated, then move on and say, are there any sp3 atoms in the ring? If there are, it's not going to be aromatic. Uh, finally, can it be planar? And then you want to finally go and count the electrons. Now, it turns out if you fail any one of the first three rules, so then you're just simply non-aromatic. But if you pass all the first three rules, so rule number four, four n plus two pi electrons, another way of saying that is an odd number of pairs. But if on the contrast, you have an even number of pairs, just simply a multiple of four pi electrons, and that could be, you know, four, eight, 12, all the way up to infinity. If you have any multiple of four pi electrons instead, that ends up making you anti-aromatic. So again, fail one of the first three rules, non-aromatic. But past the first three rules, then you just count the electrons. Is it a 4n plus 2 number? It's aromatic. If it's a 4n number, it's anti-aromatic. Let's go through a number of examples here.